Hey friends, happy Monday and welcome back to another week of What's for Dinner. If you're new here, hello and welcome. I'm Taylor and I'm a stay-at-home wife and mom and I share these What's for Dinner videos every Monday to hopefully give you some new meal ideas and motivate you to cook more for your family. We tried a couple of new things this week that I'm excited to share with you. They turned out really good. Lots of comforting meals in this week's What's for Dinner. So make sure you let me know down below if you plan on trying any of these recipes and let's go ahead and get into this week's What's for Dinner. Friday night we kept it simple and just had spaghetti but Lily actually requested that I get a spaghetti squash so I cooked that up in the instant pot. I will leave the recipe that I use down below. It's pretty quick and easy. All you have to do is cut it in half, scoop out the seeds, and then cook it for like seven minutes in the instant pot. Really simple. And we like to have spaghetti squash and noodles. It just adds more to the meal, makes it more filling, and you get some servings of vegetables. So we did that. And then just some regular old meat sauce with some ground beef and our favorite Aldi marinara. And and topped it all with some parmesan cheese saturday was a pokemon go day it was a community day which means we were out of the house from like two to five playing pokemon so i knew i wanted something quick and easy to come home to for dinner so i planned bacon and tomato paninis the kids it really just did bacon and cheese on theirs and then they had some chicken noodle soup on the side and then andy and i had some tomato soup on the side we've got bacon lots of delicious cheese and then tomato on mine and andy's Sunday, I tried a new recipe for some skirt steak in the crock pot. We're going to shred this up and turn it into tacos. So I've got my like two pound skirt steak here in the crock pot. And to that, I'm adding one tablespoon of olive oil, one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, and then one tablespoon of oregano, half a tablespoon of paprika, two teaspoons of garlic powder, two teaspoons of cumin, a teaspoon of chili powder, and then about a teaspoon of salt and half a teaspoon of black pepper and half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. And then you're just gonna massage all of that seasoning and oil into the meat. And then once that's done, I wash my hands and put my crock pot lid on this and then put this on low for six hours. Now I was gone out of the house for most of the time that this was cooking and I probably would not recommend doing that for a new recipe, but yeah. So I came home and it smelled a little burnt in the house and I was really worried. I had just ruined this entire skirt steak, which was very upsetting, but um, I checked on it. It looked like just the edges were burnt. So I let it cool off for a few minutes and then went in and shredded it up and tasted the meat. The meat in the middle did not taste burnt at all. It tasted delicious and it shredded apart wonderfully. Um, just the edges were a little bit burnt. So I just picked those like super burnt pieces out and then everything else was fine. I would suggest not cooking it this long or um, maybe adding a little bit of liquid. This is like the only time I think I've ever cooked something and not added any liquid to it in the crock pot. Probably not the best idea. Um, it did cook off a little bit of liquid which you could see in the pot but I don't think it was nearly enough. I think this meat was just so lean there wasn't a lot of liquid so it just kind of burned what little bit of liquid that there was so maybe like a cup of some beef broth would have made that a little bit better then to go with this i am making some cilantro lime rice in my instant pot for this you just need to do equal parts white rice and water so i have rinsed one and a half cups of white rice so I'm adding that to the instant pot with one and a half cups of water and then a splash of olive oil. You can also do a splash of vinegar. That just helps get your rice to not be so sticky. Then you put a lid on this, cook it for five minutes, and then let it naturally release for about 15 minutes. And then after 15 minutes, all the steam should be released and you can take off the lid and stir in two tablespoons of lime juice, two tablespoons of lemon juice, and a couple tablespoons of fresh chopped cilantro as well as salt and pepper to taste. This rice ends up tasting just like chipotle cilantro lime rice. It is so good. 
Then I served up that skirt steak on some flour tortillas as some tacos with lettuce and cheese and Taco Bell sauce, cilantro for Lily because she doesn't like lettuce, um, some tomatoes and sour cream and some extra lime for squeezing on the meat. We really liked that on the tacos. It was really good. And extra lime to squeeze on the rice as well if we wanted it. This skirt steak did taste really good. I would just definitely recommend not cooking it for six hours on low or, you know, watching it or adding some liquid or something to it. But it did taste really good. Next up, I've got this chicken pot pie bubble up bake. I saw something similar to this, I think on Pinterest, but it had like things that we don't like, like frozen mixed vegetables we don't care for very much. So I'm using canned mixed vegetables and ours and just kind of adapting it to our needs. I am putting all of my ingredients in a greased casserole dish and then I'm adding in one can of mixed veggies that I have drained, one can of cream of chicken, um, about a cup of sour cream, two cans of chicken breast that I drained, and then we're doing a bunch of seasonings. I did some garlic powder, onion salt, paprika, and pepper, and then gave everything a really good mix. And then I also added in some shredded cheddar cheese, and then I'm gonna start adding in my biscuits a little bit at a time. I am just using some regular like buttermilk biscuits from the like refrigerated section at the grocery store, and I cut each biscuit or tore each biscuit into four pieces and I'm adding them a little bit at a time and then mixing them in so they don't form like one big biscuit clump and then once they're all mixed in I'm going to top this with a little bit more shredded cheese and then this went in the oven on 350 and I did 35 minutes after 35 minutes I thought it was done you'll see a video it looked pretty done bubbly browned but when I went to go scoop some out the inside the dough was still a little too gooey, a little raw. So I bumped the heat up to 375 and cooked it for another 15 minutes. So a total of 50 minutes. The first 35 was at 350. The last 15 was at 375. And then the biscuits were cooked all the way throughout. So I definitely recommend if you have trouble with like your biscuits not getting done to maybe bump up the heat a little bit. Um, or cook it just a little bit longer. Um, I don't think that 350 was high enough to begin with. You could probably just do 375 from the beginning for like 40 or 45 minutes and it'd be done because after I was having issue at the 35 minute mark, I was like, wait, what does the temperature even say for the biscuits? And the biscuits do say they cook at 375. So I think cooking at whatever temperature your biscuits wanted from the beginning would probably be the best bet for getting this done in a shorter amount of time. On Tuesdays, Pokemon Go does spotlight hour where like there's a special Pokemon spawning for an hour between six and seven. And this week we really wanted to play. So we did that and that meant I wasn't going to cook dinner. I had planned on cooking dinner, but then Andy suggested getting something. And the pizza place that used to be in downtown Norcross used to have a carry out deal uh, on Tuesdays for $10. And we went to go call them and order pizza and they're closed. They're gone which was very sad to learn. So we ended up just getting Domino's, but they had a deal. We ended up spending only $25 for three pizzas and this fed us all for dinner this night and then lunch the next day. We got a medium with double ham. We got Andy's um, medium thin crust with his steak and feta and tomato. And then we also got a large pepperoni with extra cheese all for $25 because it was a carry out deal, which I think was not bad for dinner and lunch for four people. So we had that at the park and then the kids played for a little bit and then we went home. Wednesday, I tried a new recipe for an instant pot chicken parmesan pasta. They call it a casserole, I think, in the original recipe. But I'm starting off here with my instant pot on the saute function. I'm adding a little bit of olive oil. And then once that's hot, I'm adding in some cut up chicken breast that I've seasoned all over with salt and pepper. And then I'm also adding in half of an onion that I've diced and then a couple cloves of minced garlic that I minced on my little garlic plate. 
Then I just cook up the chicken and garlic and onions for a couple of minutes. Um, it doesn't have to be all the way cooked through because we're going to end up pressure cooking this. We just want it to not really be pink on the outside, get it a little bit cooked. And then we can add in some salt and basil and spaghetti sauce. Um, I use one jar of spaghetti sauce and then two cups of chicken broth or water. I did water and nor chicken bouillon mixed together to make my own chicken broth. Give that all a good stir and then you can add in two cups of your choice of noodles. I did some tricolor rotini. You're just going to pour those over the top and then push them down so that they're covered with the sauce, but do not stir everything together. That's like pretty common when you're making pasta in the instant pot you don't want to stir it because if you get it like all the way to the bottom usually it will stick so that's why you keep the pasta towards the top and then you're gonna put the lid on this and set the pressure cooker to pressure cook on high for 10 minutes and then once it's done cooking you want to do a quick release and then you can stir everything together and stir in some grated parmesan cheese in a separate bowl while my pasta was cooking, I mixed together a little breadcrumb mixture to go on the top. And I think this is the only thing that I would really change about the recipe. So I wanted you to just melt two tablespoons of butter and then stir in a third a cup of breadcrumbs and one cup of Parmesan cheese. Just stir it together in a bowl. But I think that this should be done on the stove top, like in a little skillet so that those breadcrumbs can get kind of crispy because they absorb that butter and then got a little bit soggy and weren't very crispy. Um, I think I would have preferred the breadcrumbs if they were kind of toasted in a skillet. So that's the only thing I would change about this. We served the pasta with the breadcrumbs on top and it was really good. Um, I would definitely make this again just with that one minor change. And finally, Thursday, last meal of the week, we had chili. I have been wanting some chili. It hadn't been cool enough. It's still not cool enough here. Um, I think we had a couple days where it was like highs in the 70s, but I, I had to make some chili. So I actually prepped this the night before because I had a busy day the next day. I had to go grocery shopping and then I had a doctor's appointment and I knew I wasn't going to feel like cooking the meat first thing in the morning. So I did this part the night before. I'm cooking up one pound of ground beef and one pound of ground pork. Um, you can use all ground beef if you want, but I had some ground pork I wanted to use up. So I threw it in here and then also one green pepper and one diced onion and then some salt and pepper. You can also season this meat with some of the seasonings that you're going to add to the chili later. I was just feeling lazy this night and honestly it was like, it'll be fine. It'll just go in the chili and then it'll get those flavors from the chili. But all of the measurements for this will be listed out down below if you would like that. So once the meat was done, I let it cool, put it in a Ziploc bag, threw it in the fridge till morning when I dumped it in the crock pot. And then this really just became like a dump and go crock pot recipe. I added in the meat and then I added in a 29 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. You could do tomato sauce if you can find it. Aldi doesn't have large cans of tomato sauce. So I did the crushed tomatoes and one small eight ounce can of tomato sauce. You're going to do three cans of diced tomatoes. I did tomatoes with the green chilies, but you could just use regular diced tomatoes. And then three cans of beans. I did one can of dark red kidney beans, one can of chili seasoned beans, and one can of pinto beans. Um, all of them drained and rinsed except for the chili seasoned beans. And then a can of tomato paste, some minced garlic, and then for seasoning, two tablespoons and half a teaspoon of chili powder, one tablespoon and a quarter teaspoon of cumin, one tablespoon of oregano, two and a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder, three fourths of a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of red pepper, half a teaspoon of cayenne, 
and then one can of water. And I think that is everything. But as I said, it will be typed out down below for y'all to get all of the instructions in a written format. This is our favorite chili recipe. Andy came up with it years ago by trying and adding things. Um, sometimes we do also add in two diced jalapenos but i forgot those and then we also add in two dried red chili peppers um, we remove those at the end somebody told me that i need to like blend them up once i remove them but i have not tried that yet i do want to try that this year though but then you just put the crock pot lid on this and let it cook on low for hours like all day as long as you can cook it um, if you don't have that long cook it on high but the longer you cook it the better it is and I think it's even better like the next day reheated um, to serve it you just top it with some cheese and crackers or we did cornbread this time um, chili is just so good and so comforting and I'm so glad it's fall and I can't wait for the weather to cool off but that is going to be it for this week's what's for dinner. I hope that y'all enjoyed it. Let me know if you plan on trying any of these recipes in the comments down below. And don't forget all the recipes that I mentioned will be in the description box. And make sure you leave me a smiley face emoji in the comments down there as well. So let me know that you made it here all the way to the end. I hope y'all have a great week and I will see you on Wednesday with the grocery haul. Bye!